Ja, ich denke mal. <lacht> Spacing out. This is Emmy without a thought in her brain. I'm forgetting everything. Ja, <lacht> yeah. so on key too. Hi everyone, my name is Amy Klein and I am an artist here in Raleigh, North Carolina. Now this is a series where I'm attempting to complete the Pantone Painting Postcard Challenge, which was originally created by Big Blue Tang. Now, her challenge was 100 postcards in 100 days. Now, my schedule is not going to allow that, so I'm slightly modifying it uh, by doing five postcards every week as much as I can. Uh, if I can do more, I do. If I have to skip a week, I do that as well. Uh, I am just attempting to complete all 100 of these postcards before I get to my residency in France. That will happen later on this year in October, uh, and I am super excited about it. We're starting to get closer. I'm so excited. So excited. Simmer. I need to simmer. But uh, I am officially starting this new week here. Usually Monday and Tuesdays are out. So I usually start this whole, uh, my weeks in general, I usually start them on Wednesdays. So today is Thursday. I'm already a little behind, not intentional. So I really need to go get started painting. But before we do that, I do need to give you guys the count. This is how many days we officially have before I leave for my residency in France. Uh, so that still means I have three weeks extra to uh, have at the end of my time if I don't use it up throughout this challenge and have to skip a week kind of a thing. So I'm gonna go get started painting and I hope you guys enjoy the video. All right, so like I said, it was Thursday and I knew I had to get painting. So rolling the die. And I'll end on four, which is one of my favorites. It's food. So food category on this really funky yellow orange card, which uh, not gonna lie, immediately made me think of candy. So naturally I painted candy. Uh, the only thing that I could think of that would be like this crazy color is either gummy bears or a circus peanut. And as much as I Love the idea of painting a gummy bear. I thought a circus peanut just worked a little bit better. And I might also just make a giant gummy bear painting. Um, yeah. So, Layers is the name of the game on this one. Um, I wasn't sure if I wanted to really kind of save that funky yellow in there. I think there's a couple spots that shine through, but for the most part, just layering on layering on layering, I really wanted to get the nice mid-tone down with the darks of the like the shadows are more like that deep orange and then the highlights are that bright yellow and the white all to make a really fun circus peanut the, the candy that I absolutely hate because it's just pure sugar and it's it's a weird texture I don't know maybe it's just me but yeah circus peanut Now, because I was behind, you know I rolled the die again. So, still Thursday, rolling, 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 almost threw it off the table and <laughs> landed on one, which is landscape. Now, uh, I believe the last time I had a landscape, I did a really, really fun, almost like rainbow-esque kind of forest scene and I could not help myself. I did another forest scene, um, so this is me sketching here just to kind of lay everything out. Uh, but this one, I wanted to go and kind of really lend into the color of the card. It reminded me of mist, like a, I know it's the lightest sky is the name of the color, but it just, it gave me like a misty haze kind of a feel. So that's what I did. I actually ended up painting this really fun little like driveway path through a forest and where the previous forest scene that I had done had like a certain spot where everything kind of faded into. This one faded, not only all the trees got much lighter in the background, but they also got lighter 
towards the top of the card so like everything was very grounded and and it all kind of got darker down at the bottom which I very much loved and you know kudos to the person who took the photo of the the reference that I was working from here and as always the reference photos are going to be linked down into the description below and it was just such a gorgeous photo that it, it just worked so so well. Alright, so it was Friday and I knew I needed to get painting and I rolled the die to land on four and pulled out this really pale, almost just barely, barely blue card. Like the difference between the white stripe at the bottom and the blue was just ever so, so slight. <clears throat> so. Yeah, so today is Thursday, and it's been a whole week since I've last painted a postcard. Uh, the week kind of got busy, and I am full-on painted out for the day. I have painted a chicken on a bike and a full oil painting. I am done for the day. I am tired. I'm so tired. Also have not been sleeping very well why i don't know i think it's just my brain it's just not stopping i eh, probably need to figure that out <laughs> but i did however decide that tonight i was going to try and finish a project that i had started uh this blob now what is this blob you might ask that's a very good question it's got a little fupa um, so this is a project that I had started and originally was going to create because I had pulled a muscle in my back and I was okay to sit there and kind of sculpt on top of this, but to sit in my studio and paint was a little painful. So this is what I started, but then I just started trying to knock these out and then I never got back to this. So because I am fried on painting for the day, I'm going to jump back to this, because apparently I have no stop. Yeah. But this, this is not a helmet it, for a very round, tiny little dome. This is going to be a melted disco ball. Now, I did start this on camera so it's been a very long time since I've started this. I honestly don't even remember what color my hair was. <laughs> Who knows? But I'm just gonna roll that footage for you guys. Yeah. So I know I just said that. Um, that footage that I was just talking about? Yeah, it's gone. It is missing entirely. No clue where it went. But fear not, I have an idea. <laughs> I will just explain via weird animated Emmy as to what I did. So first things first, I got Craft Foam, which is from my local Walmart, uh, and it's essentially just a foam half dome. Uh, there are the measurements for you, um, but it is amazing for this process. So the reason why is because of that texture. Now, there are other options like the dry foam, or these like weird uh, just foam balls that if you look at them they have little dots that make up the surface and that is not what you want neither of those are good the green will disintegrate essentially into nothing and the white uh, will leave tiny little spheres of foam all over your house they do not carve well it is it's just the devil not good not good but back to the craft foam that we love uh, now I personally trimmed off the top because I you know if it's melting down off of something it's not gonna have a perfectly round top I, I wanted it to set, look kind of like a deflated balloon where it just 
kind of started falling down a little bit in space. But I covered it in paper clay. So this is essentially air dry clay uh, made out of paper. I uh, just honestly covered the whole thing and added the fupa that you just saw just a little bit ago uh, to make it sort of this shape. It's blob. But I wanted it to sit on my mantle and kind of drip down over the edge so it kind of looks like a melting disco ball. Uh, the issue being is that front area that was solid clay dripping over the edge was so heavy that it ended up tipping the whole thing over and making it kind of sit a little bit like this, which is very frustrating. But uh, the way that I fixed that is that I had to counterbalance that weight. So I flipped that beastie over and cut a hole in the bottom. And uh, well, I filled it with rocks. I would like to say that I got rocks outside, uh, but I could not find any that would fit well. So I actually ended up having to go to Walmart and buying a bag of rocks, which I felt silly about, but it is what it is. But when I did fill it, I made sure not to go over that edge so it would still sit nice and flat on the ledge. Once the rocks were in, I filled the entire cavity with glue, specifically Mod Podge because that is a glue and kind of adhesive thing that I just don't use very often and it was available and um, didn't think about it, but that takes, yeah, it takes time to dry. It takes a lot of time to dry. But eventually it was actually dry. So now we have a blob with rocks inside. Yay! So now that we are all caught up, I have my blobby with my rocks that do completely balance this little chunker out. And um, the glue is fully, fully dried. And they're, they're not coming out of there. They are stuck. Is that Lola hair? Ew. So maybe I just need to fill it with clay and then let it sit. I don't know. We're just gonna, let's just jump into this. And that's exactly what I did. So I did just take some more of the paper clay. Uh, side note, I got it from my job. Uh, I work for Jerry's Artorama and that's where I procured it because it was, you know, easy. But I did actually fill in that cavity with the clay. Uh, I figured the more I could squish in, the better, because it would add more weight and counterbalance it even better. Um, you know, not a big deal. But you can see here, I am kind of adding in a little bit of clay here and there all over the whole thing, because there were a couple of little divots that I just wanted to kind of smooth out and, you know, get it as, I guess, good as I could. Um, but eventually this clay blob that is on the table there, I ended up turning that into, uh, kind of a little phalange and adding, um, well, I'm not gonna, not gonna say what I think that looks like, but I wanted it to look more like slime drips kind of a thing, you know, where you get like the, like full on, like cartoony kind of drip look. Uh, so that's what I was doing and this is my I guess kind of final form uh, more or less but that uh, definitely needed to dry and so as much as I thought this was going to be you know knocked out in a night boy was I wrong so once it was dry I did actually want to go back in and I'm using an exacto blade here just to make sure that those curves in between all of the drips and where they kind of meet up with the main form were a little bit more spaced out. The reason why is because I knew I was going to be gluing in pieces of glass there, the, the mirrors, and so they need a little bit more space. But as you can see, I am also sanding it uh, just to kind of smooth out the surface. Fun fact, this is totally unnecessary. I was just being extra, um, probably procrastinating about actually getting started on the gluing process, but you know, that's fine. Um, for the most part, the glass really hides everything, every little bump and like nook and cranny. Yeah, it's fine. But I did have, uh, sp speaking of crannies, uh, a, a big cranny. There was a huge crack at the bottom where I had added in the clay, but that's why I just filled it in real fast. 
Oh, here's the glue that I used to attach actually all of the little mirrors. Um, now the one that I wanted to kind of start the whole thing off with, I wanted it to be round. I wanted that to be the center of like the top of the ball. So these were the little half inch squares of mirror tiles that I had and I knew if I wanted that round I'd have to snip it off. So these are uh, tile cutters uh, where you can actually just kind of line it up within the wheels and then snip it and it will crack wherever the wheels are. Uh, to kind of make it a little bit less jaggedy and sharp, I ended up sanding off the edges to make a not perfect, but a sort of circle. Now I almost missed this part uh, where I needed to paint the base of the whole thing silver. Uh, but while that was drying, I actually ended up cutting a bunch of tiles to kind of start off the first few rounds, as you can see here. So I picked a good spot where I wanted the top to kind of be that circle piece and then started out from there. Um, so I really just wanted to keep the height of, for the first like two, three rows, I wanted to keep the height of the tile consistent. I wanted it to be the same height. Uh, then eventually I was trying to transition into just the full squares. So by that third row I had the full squares but I had little triangles that I had trimmed and kind of were sticking in so there'd be less of the actual sculpture showing through in between the cracks. And then by that fourth row I was in full squares and then just needed to kind of work my way down until I got down far enough to where um, the paint had stopped and I knew that I couldn't go any further because that clay on the bottom was wet and I couldn't paint it but this is about how far I got before I knew I just kind of was it was hard to kind of tilt it and glue and yeah so the by this time the clay was dry and I could just paint the rest of the bottom there now if this is something that you end up doing and you already have mirrors on the other side, uh, you can see here every time I move it, I physically pick it up because I just did not want to scratch those mirrors. <laughs> but uh, from here, really the process was exactly the same. Uh, I tried to keep the height and rows of the mirrors kind of consistent and any time that it would sort of not lay perfectly flat is where I would start cutting it and kind of breaking that square up but trying to keep those pieces together to where it would make kind of sense that it was kind of forming around this weird shape. Um, now I'm just going to let you guys kind of enjoy the montage of me gluing all of these tiny little mirrors down and boy where there's there was a lot there was so many but while you enjoy that footage i did want to i guess kind of talk about the pantone postcard challenge uh because that's why you were here originally <laughs> um now i guess kind of moving forward uh the whole challenge for me is going to kind of shift and change uh, another reason why is because as i realized that I was far more motivated to do tedious glass cutting and gluing and assembling this disco ball. That is a clear indication that I am burnt out, like even beyond burnt out. I was fried. I was painting all day for work and then I'd come home and then I'd paint all night for this. and. The question that kept coming into my head was, why am I doing this? And to, I just wanted to answer that question really for myself. And the original reason was to get familiar with my camera equipment again because I hadn't been using it for a while and get back into the habit of editing video, which, you know, is going to be extremely helpful when I go to France and I'm going to be doing vlogs. But that is a very different video from what I've been making. I've been making the same style video over and over again, and that's not going to help me. So with that being said, I have a running list of projects, like art projects and random things around my house that I've been dying to do. And I think I'm going to actually shift around and start doing those things. Uh, which are definitely art related and I hope you guys enjoy them. 
uh, but I'm going to do those and work on my camera skills in a different manner other than just doing an overhead kind of viewpoint. Uh, so that way I will be definitely more prepared. <laughs> um, so I think it's as much as I don't want to fail the challenge and my goal of finishing the postcards before I get to France, I think it's definitely healthier for me to stop and assess and realize that what I was doing was not beneficial to me overall. And that's that's okay to, to stop and kind of quit on something that is just not good for you. Uh, now that doesn't mean that I'm not going to finish a challenge. I have every intention of coming back from France and finishing the last 50 postcards because because I'm an incredibly stubborn person and it's a project that is just not finished in my head and I I need to finish it and I'm that person. So in the meantime though, I hope you guys uh, appreciate and understand um, the reason why I had to stop and are looking forward to the other videos that are gonna be coming out. So I will let you enjoy the rest of this footage because there is a lot of tiny little mirrors that I glued on and I included all of the footage because it took me a while. So enjoy it, dang it. <laughs> you guys can skip ahead if you really want to, but it is very satisfying to watch that last little bit happen. So enjoy. And here are those satisfying, juicy beauty shots for you guys. I think it just works so well over the mantle. I am so happy with how it turned out. And oh, let me tell you, at night when I have my candles lit, oh my gosh, look at how magical it is. It definitely took me a long time to finish, but... I think the end results were so satisfying and it's something that I get to see every single day that brings joy to my, my everyday life. So I hope you guys can make your own. And if you do, please uh, share it with me on Instagram or uh, Facebook or wherever. And of course, you know, I couldn't forget about that last postcard. This is postcard number 50, guys. It's I'm so excited to actually be like just halfway through the process. Um, even though I am going to be kind of putting it on pause and going on a hiatus from this, I am super proud of myself for doing 50 of these. I mean, if you think about it, that is 50 individual drawings and paintings and whatever, like little pieces of art that I've made. And that is quite a lot. So I'm, in, I'm pretty happy with myself, even though I'm not fully finishing the challenge just yet, but with the oyster layering was the name of the game as per usual but an oyster is so much fun to paint because there's definitely cool tones and warm tones all throughout it and 
even in areas where you really wouldn't expect it to be, like that right-hand side that got really warm, but they were in shadow, and the edge of the oyster was really blue with like hints of green and brown and yellow ochre, uh, because that's just the color of the oyster. I don't know, it was really, really fun to paint. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you made it to the end here, thank you so much for watching. I, I cannot tell you how much I appreciate it. As per usual though, if you did like the video, please hit the like button. It definitely helps out the channel and make sure you hit subscribe if you are looking forward to those weird art videos that are coming soon. So <laughs> I hope you had a fun time watching me make all the art things and I will see you next time.